I want to set a scene for you that may or may not be relatable. It's sometime in the late 2000s. You just got done watching all the episodes of Higurashi no Naku Koroni split into three separate videos on YouTube. And you think to yourself, wouldn't it be pretty cool if I could understand this without the subtitles? I should try learning Japanese. But instead of going to the library and getting a reputable Japanese learning book, you go straight to YouTube, looking for some quick and easy videos to digest in the meantime. And what you come across is not what you expected, not at all. You come across the channel Bum Number One, and what you see in here shocks you to your very core. Kampai, you bitches! It's time for Nama Sensei's fucking Japanese lessons. It's truly a sight to behold, but you're laughing too hard to make sense of it. Let's analyze this. An intoxicated man wearing an academic cap stands in front of what appears to be his refrigerator, and hovers uncomfortably close to the camera. The first words out of his mouth give mixed messages. He says cheers in Japanese before calling you a bitch. Yoroshiku, you bitch. This is not the Japanese teacher you were expecting. But you decided, in this instant, after watching just 10 seconds of his oddly hostile introduction, that he will be your Japanese teacher. Don't be writing fucking love notes and shit in your fucking notebook. This is Nama Sensei, a name that translates into English as Raw Teacher. <laughs> so who is Bum Number One? Also known as Nama Sensei, or just by his actual name, Jeremy Fawn. His first foray into YouTube started with his Smashed Update series, which has him showing off various video games while drunk, as the title suggests. And drink some fucking beer. The Smashed Update has a bit of a double meaning though, because it also predominantly showcased the then newly released Super Smash Bros. Brawl. It's one motherfucking night before Brawl releases right here in Japan, broadcasting from motherfucking Hirakata. This is Jeremy Thorne, and this is the Smash Update. He was in a bit of a unique position as an English speaker residing in Japan at the time. Brawl wouldn't be released in the US for another couple months, and even longer for the rest of the world. So these would have been pretty novel and informative videos to stumble upon. <sighs> That's the shit. <clears throat> now it's time. If you see three more stages that you haven't seen from me before, so fucking stay tuned, and we'll get into that shit, bitch. All of them urged his viewers to go to dkvine.com and ask him questions. This is a Donkey Kong forum that he was associated with, and it's still around to this day, interestingly enough. This kind of integration of YouTube and an external site is something you don't really see nowadays, but it wasn't too uncommon back then. It was before YouTube became this monolithic, all-consuming entity and forums were still very much a place people frequented and used to post their gaming videos. I wasn't able to find any archives of these forum posts, but some of them can be seen in the Smashed Update videos themselves. Well, Shadow K... L... Oak... 8? What the fuck? He didn't answer questions only related to Brawl, either. One of them was just asking him how to fix a broken cigarette would get questions on his answering machine, which suggests he put his phone number on the forum. But I suspect this is just a bit. Oh, I gotta say, as you can probably tell, I'm gonna be playing Smash Brothers Brawl while I'm bloody pissed, mate. And I don't mean angry, although one usually does lead to the other. It's funny or not knowing, honestly. He would also enlighten us on a very important question. Just what was this drunk American guy doing in Japan in the first place? I'm a fucking composer. I hoped to fucking work for a company much like this fucking company over here, making music for games. It wouldn't be until episode 12 of this series where he would start trying to educate his audience on Japanese culture and language in his own unique way. This would plant the seeds for what would later become. By the way, these videos are so old, the comment sections are all kinds of fucked up. You can see Bum Number One replying to comments, but not the comments themselves, making it appear as if he's having a schizo conversation with nobody. Lord only knows what he's replying to with some of these. This is just kind of how all YouTube videos from this era are. If you're wondering where I was during this time, I was probably uploading episodes of the anime School Days and OSTs from Sonic games, but I digress. Speaking of outdated YouTube features, this leads us to one of my personal favourite videos on this channel. 
How to deal with YouTube death threats. This was back when you could still send channels direct messages. Do I look scared or drunk? <clears throat> I think I look drunk. This is an absolutely magical video that truly encapsulates what it was like being on this site back in 2008. I could fuck you up and cut your neck up, and I will sell your neck on eBay and make a profit. I will cut up your ass bitch. So shut the fuck up because I live in Harlem and me and my boys can blow Japan up, pussy, and Naruto is dope. Does this motherfucker realize where Naruto comes from? The Smashed update didn't just cover Smash though, he also later talked about other video games that had yet to see a release in English, such as Final Fantasy IV on the DS. He would also sometimes include his own translations of some of the cutscenes. For some reason, he had a real hatred for Sega that kind of annoyed me back in the day, but now I just find it funny. When I played that fucking demo after I saw Sega, I almost threw it out, but... Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. He'd also film some videos at the Tokyo Game Show. Because YouTube only allowed 10 minute videos at the time, for most people anyway. Not all of his work was available on this channel. He often redirected his viewers to a website called file2.com, which can be seen in this video. But nowadays it just redirects to dkvine.com. The stuff he made here was also a collaboration with a few different people, most notably his then best friend Sam Respez. The two of them made a TV show a few years prior called Homeless in Denton that aired on North Texas television, a network for student productions. Honestly, this whole thing is a bit of a rabbit hole all of its own, but the important part is that this is where his YouTube name comes from. He played Bum Number One, and Sam played Bum Number Two. It's kind of a mockumentary, gross out comedy show following a couple bums as they do bum things, I guess. This is only six months old! It's only six months old! Score! 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 Oh, and they have a pet dolphin named Schroeder. The last episode of this was a one off special in Japan. Unless you count the sort of reboot that Sam Respes made over a decade later that did not feature bum number one. They also made another show from this era called Slamfest. According to their website, Vague Rant Productions, this was a show that featured the bums narrating over fights between various celebrities and pop culture icons. I have no idea if this was live action, animated, done with suitmation, fucking action figures slamming together, or whatever else. As far as I can tell, all 60 something episodes of this show are lost to time. There was a DVD for sale on the website, but you can no longer buy that. The site itself is long gone, but thanks to the Wayback Machine, many of its pages are still viewable. It is arguable when Vagrant Productions actually began. One could say that it was in 2004, when Jeremy Fawn and Sam Respez grabbed a video camera and filmed themselves making jello shots with Everclear. Or at the beginning of 2005, when they got drunk behind a gas station right after purchasing a new video camera, and came up with ideas that would be the genesis of their hit cable access show Homeless in Denton. The actual moment when the logo was created was in May 2007 in Hirakata City, Japan. During the filming of Homeless in Japan, Put It In Your Mouth and Slamfest 2. After hearing Jeremy state he always wanted the logo to be footage of a dog taking a dump, Sam drew it up. I mean chicken wings, bitch! Watch the show Put It In Your Mouth and fucking learn how I cook. Put It In Your Mouth was a cooking show that was also hosted by Jeremy and Sam. It features everything you should come to expect from them by now. Lots of cursing and drinking, and the occasional bit of gross out humour. There was going to be a second season of this, but only one episode of it was released, with the rest being stuck on old DV tapes, according to this comment. It's a shame because this one episode from season 2 is one of the funnier ones in my opinion. It really started hitting their stride. The very first episode from 2004, which was described as a sort of prequel to this format called Cooking with Beaver Machine, seems to be lost as well. If you're wondering what the hell Beaver Machine is, it was the name of their band. The opening song to this show has lived rent free in my head for well over a decade now. Japan, 
That's why we can't smoke grass. It was a reboot series that Jeremy made a Kickstarter for in early 2013. He explained that part of the budget would go towards relocating Sam from Denton to LA, which is where this particular season would be shot. Hence the name, Put It In Your Mouth LA. It exceeded its goal by over a thousand dollars, showing that this drunken duo had some dedicated fans at the time. Some of the higher tiers included a Blu-ray release and a chance for backers to appear as guest chefs in the show itself. However, soon after getting funded, it was announced that the project would very likely get cancelled, and that backers would be refunded. The reason for this is, undoubtedly, quite a dark chapter in the channel's history. There was some kind of altercation involving Sam Respes that led to him being kicked out of Jeremy's house. According to Jeremy, it escalated to a point where the police had to be called in. That sounds like a pretty epic lost episode of Put It In Your Mouth, I must say. The show ended up not being cancelled though, contrary to that earlier post. Only the first episode featured Sam. This was presumably shot right before they had a falling out. The rest of the episodes featured different co-hosts, such as Nick Robinson? The So I Booked a Flight to Japan guy? Interestingly, his brother, Porter Robinson, sampled Nama Sensei in one of his songs. 100% in the bitch! 100% in the bitch! Anyway, some of these LA episodes are pretty gimmicky. There's an entire episode where they LARP as cultists for half an hour. But they do eventually recover from the loss of Sam and get back into the flow of things. <coughs> bitch. The smashed update was gaming videos with beer and swearing. Something that wasn't too uncommon in this era of YouTube. Actually, it was kind of just the status quo if you were looking for any kind of gaming content on there. After all, this was the age of AVGN and his many clones. That's not to say that every YouTuber liked Jeremy who drank, cussed and talked about video games were ripping off the AVGN. But it was definitely something that was in the zeitgeist of the time. And some were better at it than others. Bum number one, I think, was one of the more natural users of such colourful language, and I suspect it's because it was less of a character and more how he was in day-to-day -day life. Now, I'm not saying he literally walked around Japan drinking and aggressively calling people a bitch, as funny as that would be, but those few moments of candor in certain videos suggest he was playing into what was already there for humorous effect. Here's a fucking analogy for you. When you take a shit, you say, <sighs> Cause you're taking a fucking shit. Do you act like that in normal life? Well, yeah, you take a shit every day. But no, you don't act like that when you're fucking giving a dissertation on world peace. The gaming sphere of YouTube Sierra 2008 was well acquainted with this presentation. However, never had anyone seen a more raw Japanese teacher. Fucking bitches. It's time once again for Nama Sensei's fucking Japanese lessons. You Roshku. You bitch! I don't know if it was intentional or just a happy coincidence that Jeremy's YouTube persona was the antithesis of everything the Japanese considered proper. Instead of polite and meek, he was crass and confrontational. He was like some kind of post-World War II caricature of a rude American expat in Japan. Which made it all the more amusing that he, of all people, was the one teaching you the language and culture. You're gonna be able to understand Japanese, and you're gonna be able to speak it. So fucking sit your ass down and get ready to learn something, you stupid fucking cunts. But Nama Sensei wasn't a joke. This wasn't just some skit. Once you get past the unique presentation style, you realize he's actually a pretty good Japanese teacher for a number of different reasons. I dare say he's a good teacher because of his unique presentation style. At least if you don't get completely blackout drunk while watching these videos. Well, maybe. I learn by drinking alcoholic beverages constantly. It's easier to learn something in general when the material isn't dry and boring. But the way he teaches also helps you commit things to memory. It just looks like a fucking squiggle to you, but it ain't. It's fucking so... So there, you bitch! The only way I remember to write so is to say fucking so out loud. What do I think of with the motherfucking Triforce? Does it look like a fucking sack? Well, kinda, yeah, it kinda does look like a sack. Don't want you to fucking remember that. 
Another example of this can be found with his music video reminding you how to count in Japanese. You're a stupid fucking bitch. He's also just good in general at breaking things down and giving you time to process them with funny tangents. If you're in a fucking movie theater, it's dark, and she has her hand down your fucking pants, and you can say Suki, alright? That's when you say that shit. Don't be saying that shit to someone you just met off the street. Is Nama Sensei doing this on purpose? Is he secretly a genius? There often isn't a quick and convenient method for memorizing things, however. In these cases, you just have to write it 50 fucking times in your, your motherfucking, motherfucking notebook. notebook. 50 motherfucking times. 50 times, bitch. 50 times. 50 fucking times in your notebook, bitch. 50 fucking times. But you still have to write it 50 times, so do it. Nama Sensei wasn't teaching you any old Japanese, though. His lessons had practical purpose for anyone going to Japan. All of the important stuff, like ordering beer at karaoke or picking up bitches. Cause if you keep saying yo bitch, this bitch, that bitch, obviously you're not gonna get any fucking head. So how effective were Nama Sensei's Japanese lessons? Users on the internet still occasionally look back fondly on them and wish for his return. He was a teacher that was more down to earth. He can be likened to a drill instructor. You got the sense that he wasn't just verbally tearing into you to put you down. There's more to it than that. He wanted you to reach your full potential. You could do this shit, you stupid bitch. You may be a bitch, but he wanted you to be the best bitch you possibly could be. I mean, if he actually hated you, why would he be taking time out of his day to teach you Japanese in the first place? Or encouraging you to drink along with him? Cheers to you for fucking learning this shit. Nama Sensei only wanted what was best for you. He would always be around to whip you into shape by calling you a bitch. Alas, he had many problems with YouTube itself, or rather, Google AdSense, which still owes him over a grand in ad revenue to this day. Apparently they won't pay him because he moved to a different country. The daily dumps would eventually come to an end, and the final Japanese lesson would come in the form of a presentation teaching Osaka Ben. Ahoka means, are you fucking stupid? And the answer is yes. You are fucking stupid. Remember it. After this, there were some videos explaining how to play Dota 2, which I remember watching in their entirety at the time, despite having no interest in the game. But that was pretty much it for YouTube and Nama Sensei as a whole. He started a business called Remote, making some kind of device that allowed you to control a home security system via Wi-Fi or something like that. Honestly, it's surreal hearing him talk professionally here without dropping bitch and fuck every sentence. You can choose to connect Remote and all your devices to the internet using either Wi-Fi or Ethernet. When Remote connects to the internet, the red light will turn off. He would stream over on Twitch every now and then, and this is where he can still occasionally be found to this day. YouTube is far too sanitized for a channel like this nowadays. Actually, I think it was far too sanitized for it even back then. And you can be friends with a crackhead, but if you become one, I'll piss on your grave. But nevertheless, he embodies that spirit of old YouTube that I find myself nostalgic for. The past. Some people live in the motherfucking past. This is a bit different from my usual content on this channel, but it's a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time. He's not necessarily a super big or well-known YouTuber, but he's certainly one that left an impression on me and many others. So I wanted to make this deep dive on his content and history. A huge thank you to the man himself for answering some of our questions a few years ago. I implore you to go check out some of his old videos and see if you can catch him streaming sometime. In either case, make sure to crack open a beer. You bitch! A special thank you to my channel members and patrons. I've been Snickety Slice, so I'll see you around.